Log on, tune in, find out. Another good idea from Cambridge. Masahito Yamazaki, uh, here from Princeton, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, who will talk to us about partition functions of three-dimensional theories, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Um, <laughs> so, thank. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank this opportunity for giving a talk here, and also visiting this uh, wonderful institute. Uh, well, this is my first time to come here. I'm clearly impressed by the building, atmosphere, etc., uh, which I'm enjoying so far. So, uh, w by the way, microphone is on. I guess I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> so, well, today, as the title shows, I'm going to talk about the equivalence of uh, partition functions to 3D series. Um, and but uh, well, this is work in collaboration, uh, which I have done with uh, mathematicians uh, recently on various topics, and I might mention some of the related paper. Uh, and, well, and this is somewhat, um, well, first of all, the statement itself is somewhat in curious mathematical equality, uh, where, well, this is a 3D gauge theory uh, with a lot of matters, uh, gauge, so it, it's a gauge theory, so it has n the matters with a lot of interactions. It's highly interacting, uh, but still we can compute this partition function. And it's related to something geometrical uh, associated with some uh, topological uh, information. Well, not necessarily just topological, but uh, geometrical information about the three manifold. And well, before uh, talking about the specific topics, I, I was originally intending to talk about uh, only about this topic. But um, maybe I heard that there are not too many talks about uh, similar topics, uh, at least in this program for a while. Well, there was a program uh, conference, I think, in January. but probably people have moved out already. Um, so uh, let me begin with a somewhat broader uh, viewpoint. Um, and hopefully I'll come to some more recent developments. And, and uh, perhaps I should mention that uh, well, there are some interesting mathematical structures popping out. A lot of so many interesting mathematical structures. Um, one of them is a cluster algebra, uh, which was, well, this itself is actually in the math archive, math GT, where GT stands for geometric topology. And so hopefully this is um, well, I, th I think this is a very interesting field where physics, very profound physics ideas come to interact uh, with um, very sophisticated mathematics. And, and of course, uh, I noticed that the title for this workshop is um, the mathematics and uh, applications of brains or strings or M-theory, et cetera. And this is exactly, I think, this topic. So use mathematics something, and I'm going to talk about M5 brains, uh, which is a brain M-theory. Um, and well, and there are, T two basic st stories uh, which are, well, this, this story fits into the a little bit larger category where uh, people discuss uh, two such things. Uh, the first thing is the, uh, the compactation of um, 62 comma zero series. And I think we are going to hear uh, more about this uh, six dimensional uh, series later this week and probably next week. And, and, and then there are also uh, exact localization computations. Um, computations, localizations in uh, supersymmetric series. And I think indeed Sarah is going to talk about uh, uh, such topics um, afterwards and in the afternoon today. And, and th these topics are very closely related. And indeed, I'm going to use some techniques from here to discuss uh, this compactation of 60 uh, 2 comma 0 series. And well, so my story is about, so these are relations between uh, two three-dimensional series. But these come from the dimensional reduction of R62, comma zero theory, and, when, and this itself is defined on certain three manifold, and this is defined on a certain three, three sphere. And the moral of the story is that we're going to compactify the 6D theory on S3 times M3, where sorry M, where M is a certain three manifold, and that kind of explains why uh, such an equality holds. And well. So the 62 comma zero series is a lot of mysterious theory. It's an uh, interacting uh, fixed point in six dimensions. And even just the existence of that is one of the most wonderful predictions of string theory in the 90s. And, and they have, for example, ADE classifications uh, because they are defined from uh, type, uh, type 2B compactation of the K3 surfaces where we have the singularities. And, and the mysterious thing about 62 comma zero series is that we have well, from the supersymmetry alone, we can s 
see what kind of matter fields there are in the 62,0 series. This, there are five scalar fields. Uh, for I, for where I runs from one to five, there are five scalar fields. Partly because uh, there is, uh, if you have 62,0 series, um, there is SP2, SP4, well, depending on the preference, um, which is the same, locally the same as SO5 R symmetries. It has five dimensional R symmetries, and then there are these five scalars transforms under SO5 rotation symmetry. And there are some fermions, uh, which satisfy some symplectic type conditions. And, and it has a curious field, uh, the V mu nu, the two form satisfying uh, this self duality constraint in six dimensions. So this is the model content of the multiple tensor multiple in six dimensions. Uh, so this is the only multiple uh, with which doesn't contain gravity. And and the curious fact is that this is the self dual two form. And it's not the um, the gauge field in the sense that this is a two form and it's self dual. So it should couple something uh, for the self dual string. And and due to the self duality constraint, it's not easy to write down the Lagrangian. Well, which is analogous to the case of type, say, type to be, to, to be supergravity, where we have the uh, self-duality constraint for the five-form flux in that case. And well, that, that's very similar in this case. And also, since it's electric, somewhat uh, the electric dual, so elect there is an electric magnetic dual, which keeps the theory equivalent, uh, which essentially says that uh, the, cup, the size of the cup charge, the size of the coupling constant is order one, uh, because, um, because Dirac quantization con condition says that if you have in this electric magnetic duality, coupling E is, is mapped to one of E, but that should be the same as E itself. So it's it, coupling is order one. So it's very uh, difficult theory and highly difficult to analyze the theory. And we don't know much about it still. And, and of course, part of the reason we, want, we are studying this compactation of 60 series is we, we can possibly learn about this 60 series by uh, studying their compactations. Although we haven't succeeded that far in that list yet. But, but certainly there are uh, many things we already know about the 60 series. Well, sorry if, if, if I'm starting very sorry, but uh, let's see. Uh, well, please uh, free to ask any questions or if you get bored, I can speed up a little bit. But let's see, anyway, so this is a 60 uh, series. And, and, and of course, the one of the interesting uh, aspects of this is that if you have, you can consider this the AN type series um, and uh, and then the degrees of freedom scales like n cubed. And there are several arguments for that. And indeed, for example, David has a nice review about that. And then there are at least three arguments, for example, why, uh, how to derive that. Um, but anyway, so it's a mysterious theory. But there are some clues when, when we compactify, oh, this moves. When we compactify the theory. And so let's consider the compactations on S1, for example. And by just counting from the counting supersymmetry, so this is a uh, five-dimensional maximal supersymmetric yeah, mills, uh, n equal to super m mills. And, and then when we do the dimensional reduction, um, there, there was this nasty uh, safety of two formulas here. But uh, this becomes, if you do the dimensional reduction, this has two parts, b mu 5 and uh, b mu nu, where mu nu runs from 0 to 3. Uh, sorry, zero to four, five, d five dimensional part, but there is a self duality constraint. So we cannot, we can forget about this part. So we have just one indexing. So the two form reduces to something with one index. So this is the, um, uh, so this is just a uh, gauge field. So trivially, this reduces to five dimensional equal to uh, super m mills. And and, and it's similarly, if you have a torus and you have five dimensional n equal four super mills, and what's interesting in this case is that there is a, a complex action moduli of tau, uh, which I denote tau, uh, and uh, there is an SL2Z action of that. And then this, that SL2Z action of the geometric SL2Z action on this tau is translated into the, the, um, uh, SL, the S duality of the four dimensional n equal four series, where we have uh, this uh, complex conjugation. Um, 4 pi over g squared. So there is a complexified gauge coupling. And this gauge theory data could be let off from the part of the uh, complex structure moduli of the torus. And, and, then, and then the recent story is that we can depress it by more general Riemann surface with general punctures. And we have 4D uh, n equal 2 series. 
uh, with uh, another, again, with a complexified uh, gauge coupling. Uh, and then th there is a mo moduli, uh, the complex structure module of the Riemann surface, and then these are, oh, well, these are, oops, the correspondent. Uh, well, and today's story is about um, generalized up to three manifolds on the three manifold, and we have three dimension. In this case, we have a three dimensional n equal two supersymmetry in general. And well, one way to see that we have three dimensional n equal two symmetry is to use argument from the topological twist. And well, of course, the six dimensional theory, as I said, we don't know, so we don't know even how to do top, do, top, do the topological twist. But one thing we know is that if you compactify for S1, I mean, typically S1 compactation doesn't reduce any supersymmetry. So we can first compactify this whole setup and, and then discuss the topological twist of this high dimensional maximal supersymmetric Yamil theory. And then there, uh, there we have SO5 R symmetry uh, corresponding to uh, the, the transverse direction to five dimensions in, inside 10 dimensions. And so we have six dimensional theory. Um, we want to discuss six dimensional theory on N3 times, say, R3. But we can the dimension reduce it on S1. And we have five dimensional theory on um, M times R, the remaining two, the two directions. And in order to do preserve supersymmetry, we have to do the topological twist. And here we have SO5 R symmetry. And here in the cotangent space, since this is a three manifold, um, there is SO3, uh, SO3 rotation symmetry. And the topological twist proceeds by uh, decomposing this R symmetry into SO3 and SO2. And, um, and we are going to mix these two SO3s. But well, there are different topological twists you, you can do depending on the different manifolds. But, but at least this is a topological twist you can do. And we have SO2 R symmetry remains. And in three dimensions, if you have S O N R symmetry, it's, it has uh, the number of supersymmetries uh, is n, so it's n equal to supersymmetry. So this argument shows that it should have it should be a certain uh, three-dimensional n equal two theory, and you can do the same type of argument to show that in this case, indeed, if you have the general Riemann surface, it preserves all dimensional n equal uh, two supersymmetry. Uh, so in the three-dimensional manifold, is there some moduli parameter like power parameter? Yes, uh, yes, that's right. So, for, for example, yeah, so it, it's so basically the moduli, associated moduli space is the moduli space of uh, flat SL2C connections on the three manifold. Well, the one way to see that, that, that that's the counterpart of let, let's, for example, go to the, the two dimensional case, probably it's better. So, I was saying that it's the same as the moduli space of complex structure deformations of the Riemann surface. So, that's one thing. But there is a somewhat different way of saying that. The different way of saying that is that this is the moduli space of flat SL to R connection um, on the Riemann set. And it's actually the same as the, as the moduli space of complex structure deformations. And uh, well, indeed, the, but, but there are some minor differences associated with the global structure of the moduli space. I mean, these are several different connected components, etc. But one statement is that you can consider moduli space of flat SL to R connections on this Riemann surface. And then a particular connected, but sometimes it's PSR too, but, but anyway. Um, you have to consider the, take the particular connected component of, the, of this moduli space of flat connection, and it's the same as the Tychimera space, the space of complex deformation. Okay, what is the gate theory parameter, uh, three dimensional theory parameter? Well, so in this case, um, well, so in this case, for example, um, so, and then we, ha we have similarly uh, the moduli space of flat SL2R or SL2C if you do the analytic quantumation. Um, so that's going to be a moduli space associated with the series, and then uh, and then these correspond to, um, the, for, for example, these, these correspond to the scalars in the vector matrix which we have uh, of the series, over which we integrate. In other words, uh, for example, this is somewhat like a quantum situation. So you know, to really this because this on this side we have a certain quantum theory, uh, quantum channel simon theory. But for, in order to really make contact with the classical flat connections, you have to do the classical limit, which in this case is the limit where your splashing parameter goes to zero. And in, this, in that case, you have the three D series reduces to two D series, and we have an, and then we have the um, scalars in the vector multiplet, uh, and the, we have an integral of the twisted superpotential of that. Well, maybe I'm going too far uh, for other audience, but 
OK, um, let's see. So this is the general uh, structure. So, so, sorry, I, I can explain it later more in detail. But, yeah, but basically, the vacuum of this three-dimensional n equal two series corresponds to some geometric of modular space associated with the, of the geometry. And, and, let's, and for this three manifold, let, let me write this Tm. And for this, if you have a Riemann surface associated for the n equal two series, often you can have a T sigma. And, and then there, if you have such a correspondence, there are uh, basically two things to do. Um, the first step is to identify T sigma or Tm. I mean, given the Riemann surface or given the three manifold, what's the corresponding uh, the theory? And well, in this case, in the case of Riemann surface, essentially Gauss to solve the problem. And in this case, um, well, for, for the most, so far, the most general proposal so far is the paper by Dimovsky, uh, Gaiot, Gukov, and where, um, uh, where they discuss a large class of hyperbolic three manifolds. Although there are still a class of uh, three manifolds, somewhat exceptional three manifolds, which are not hyperbolic, and they are not discussed in great detail. But, but at, at least the problem is first, I said just conceptually that it probably there is associated three dynamical two series. But the question of what's the Lagrangian? Does it have any Lagrangian? What's the model contents? What's the symmetry? Uh, Etc. So that, that's the one question we have to answer. And, and but roughly speaking, if you have some uh, such identification, and then the argument is that uh, there is some equivalence of the Hilbert space, um, which I, I roughly like as T sigma, or you can do the same for uh, the three manifold case. In other words, um, what I was alluding to a little bit is that there is some moduli space, the moduli space of cross connections uh, here on this two manifold or three manifold. And then on the gate field side, by statically something related to BTS uh, sector of the theory. And you can, again, uh, there is associated Hilbert space. And, and then the statement is that these Hilbert spaces are the same. Although people, I mean, in, in a lot of cases, so this is going to be the, uh, to some extent, the ultimate formulation of all these AGT-like stories. Um, but uh, in practice, of course, it's not too easy to identify the Hilbert, associated Hilbert spaces. So what, 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 to some extent, for example, Necros of Witting was close to doing this in, in certain contexts. But, um, but anyway, um, there, there should be some equivalence of Hilbert spaces, you know, the equivalence of series, certain sectors of the Hilbert space theory, which are the same. So this is one statement. But in practice, why it's difficult to analyze these Hilbert spaces directly, so what pe people typically do is to uh, compute some observables in the theory, or some quantities, so that instead of comparing vector space, uh, Hilbert spaces, we can compute, uh, we can propose an equality which we can check. Um, so, um, so the next thing is compute some quantities, observ of what is observables. Uh, well, maybe an observable is not some, oh, compute some quantities, extract, ext extract numbers, I would say. By doing some computations. And, and there are several different um, ways of quantities which, I can propose, uh, which you can do. So let me proceed to that. Uh, what kind of quantities are here? I'm going to explain that. But so far, are there any questions so far? OK, so what kind of uh, uh, quantities we can compute? And uh, that's how uh, the connection to, to the second part of the story, the exact localization computation comes in. And, and then, well, nowadays, there are a lot of techniques to analyze. Analyze meaning compute exact quantities in supersymmetric gauge series, compute in the sense that some quantities are written as matrix integrals, etc., and um, and Sarah is indeed going to talk about it. But, um, but I'm not going to the I mean de details of how to do that, etc. But just mention what kind of quantities we can compute. And well, and I said previously that there, there are equivalences of Hilbert spaces, but depending on what kind of quantities you compute, um, for on the four-dimensional side or three-dimensional, I mean supersymmetric gauge series side. That corresponds to something different on the two manifold or three manifold. And, and the most famous example 
uh, is the, uh, the so-called AGT. I think I'm sure a lot of people already thought about it 20 times or so. Uh, but um, if you have, say, T sigma, this compute service T sigma, and um, on S4 partition function. Well, let's see. And if you, you can start with four-dimensional n equal two series, and compact one T4. And there, there are very nice uh, matrix model, but uh, which you can do, and you can compute a partition function. Well, let's see. Maybe I like ZT star S4. And, and here, this one corresponds to two-dimensional review theory on the, on the Riemann surface. So this is the famous AGT stories. And well, here we have some correlation functions or conform blocks, and the correlation function corresponds to this S4 partition function. Um, but, but you can do some other things. Um, for example, you can compute S1 times S3 partition function. And here, uh, well, there is S1. So you can, essentially, this is a width index along the S1 directions. But there are a lot of uh, twists you can include along the S1, as long as it's consistent with the supersymmetry. Which, um, and, and we are using that supersymmetry to do the localization. And we can include some chemical potentials for the energies, spins, R charge, et cetera, uh, which are people typically like PQT. No, I forgot to note U. Maybe B, I forgot the notation. But there are several parameters you can tunnel, correspond to energy, spin, R charge, roughly. And so this is not just a number, but some function or a polynomial of, with respect to these Roland polynomial, not, not Roland polynomial, but it's a series with respect to these parameters. And, and then this corresponds to two-dimensional uh, TQFT on the Riemann surface. So this is AGT. And, and then that's why um, well, a lot of people, did. well, by the Stony Brook people, for example, got the last theory of the Mafia. And then especially, and in some cases, this includes the two-dimensional Q deformed Yam mills. And so de depending on what observables you consider, that corresponds to different two-dimensional theory. And, and then what I was uh, talking about in this title, says that if you have the TM um, on the three on the three sphere that corresponds to uh, 3D um, SL2 Chan Simon theory on this three manifold, and you can compute this partition function. And then there are more recently uh, corresponding statements for the three dimensional index, which is S2 times S1. But uh, these are the basic structures. Uh, well, I think, yeah, there should be. Uh, but I think nobody has really worked that out, except that well, there are similar stories. Well, there is a similar story for the compactified version. Uh, in other words, uh, that's the paper. Uh, that's what we did with uh, Yuji and uh, Tatsuma, which is in this paper. Um, and in that version, we have uh, four-dimensional. We start with four-dimensional equal four series and compact by on three dimensions apart S3 times interval. So four is decomposed into one plus three. And on the one, one dimensional side, we have a, a quantum mechanics, but the one dimensional part is really like a graph. So really like a graph, meaning, for example, there are graphs like this. And then there are some boundary conditions which you have to put on here. Boundary conditions in this context of n equal four theory. So for the n equal four theory on S3 times the interval, and you can de decompose into three dimensional part on S3, and one dimensional quantum mechanics on, on this interval, and, and we, we compute the partition function of this and what is that, et cetera. And in principle, I mean, they, they, we should try to start this financial n equal, um, um, n equal two, super M mills. And what you're mentioning is the, this, this corresponding. So I, I have some baby versions, but not really in that case. But and, and I, think, I think the idea itself is rather more general. So what people might want to do is that, for, for example, instead we just try to do 
say S2 times S2 times S2, etc. Or some Lehman surface, maybe. I mean, the, you have to make sure that uh, appropriate supersymmetries are preserved because we want to do some computations by localization, etc. And uh, typically, we, we, this, on the supersymmetric side, we have the conformal flat background. So S4 is, for example, conformal flat to uh, conformal flat. So at the, if you go through to the IR, uh, you can do the conformal trans. It's a conformal theory, and you can do the conformal transformation to map it to R4. So we don't really. And there are some nice conformal killing spinners feature uh, uh, on, on these conformal flat manifolds. That's why uh, five we can do the computation. But I think the idea itself is rather general. And, and to some extent, I started with some uh, 6D theory uh, there. I said, but in practice, you can do whatever theory you want. You can take any supersymmetry theory and then try to compactify with various amount of supersymmetries. And, and then you have a statement like this in, in that context. In, in sense, th that should be the case. Although what's surprising about this six dimensional theory is that a lot of so many things you can think of. For example, I was talking about this quantum mechanical problem, etc. And you don't really need to say 62 comma zero theory, but you can com understand it's all these theories, all these correspondence, these ones and that one, as a reduction from uh, 62 comma zero theory. So that's that's a strong hint that the 62 comma zero theory should be a, a rather uh, interesting theory, I guess. So, um, and 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 if you like, for example, there are several. But for, for example, I was a little bit imprecise when I say that. Uh, because the more precise method to E1 type corresponds to the bill and N type corresponds to total series. And um, but they are, they are corresponding statements list entry for D and E type uh, cases. So you can do, try to do the generalization. Or, for example, you can try to do the OB folding, uh, Z2. And uh, there are some papers uh, that are being filing, for example, saying that this corresponds to some super review theory. So you can try to do the twist. or for example, well, I listened to have a paper about um, uh, trying to do the, some ZP OB fold of this theory, and you can construct a partition function. And that, again, corresponds to a uh, two-dimensional conform field theory with one parameter, one discrete parameter. Well, Q is not already K, for example, with one discrete parameter and that we can show to some extent. So there are, I mean, you can, for example, generate OB folds. Um, so there are a lot of interesting thing you play with. And also, I didn't say much, but for example, you can try to include various observables with some lines to, to surface operators to all these stories, and then try to see how they are mapped. So um, indeed, there are a lot of things uh, you can do. Um, and, and in practice, if you want to do the comp precise computation, things are becoming very messy, um, um, but not necessary, uh, depending on your, on your preference. But Computation sometimes becomes messy. You have a complicated formula, Shiva functions, etc. Uh, but what I'm going to explain next is that, um, well, of course, these are beautiful techniques. But but at least the basic idea about uh, how to well, I was talking about this part, and uh, it's about extracting numbers. And of course, that's where all these technical machinery comes in. Um, so, but, but at least as far as the part part one is concerned, part one is identify the series. Uh, you don't really necessarily have to go through uh, the computations. Um, but that should be the case because these are extra things which are placed on top of these series. So there should be a simple way to identify uh, the series, T, T m or T sigma. And, and then that's how I return to. And, and of course, if I, if I want to do some computation, I, I should uh, again come back to the, these um, computational tool. But, but at least the basic idea is very simple. That's what I want to show. And, and the basic idea is the follows. Well, there are, I think, two basic ideas. And one is to, con well, one is to consider um, this setup where uh, we have some manifold. And let's say this is a d-dimensional manifold. And this is a d minus one dimensional manifold. And let's say I consider a complication of six-dimensional theory on MD or MD minus one. Uh, maybe I do it too large. But, but then there is a corresponding thing. Uh, so this should correspond to some supersymmetric series in six minus d dimensions, g m d, and seven minus d dimensions, uh, d minus one. There are corresponding series for for the, for the series in the, for the manifold on the boundary, or the manifold at the bulk. 
So there should be some corresponding supersymmetric series. So these are coming from the compactation of the 6D series, or any whatever theory you might have. And, and now, if you look at this figure, um, well, I, I kind of, well, to some extent, it assumed that uh, this, the series on these Riemann search on these manifolds are simple. And, and for, for example, in some cases, indeed, uh, I, um, well, for example, these are topological quantum field series, transformal series, so there's a topological series. And the topological theory, if you look at, look at this figure like this, there is something you should come up with. Um, and that's formulated in the, in, in the action ties by Atf and Seagull, et cetera. But, well, the idea is that suppose that you have a certain thing uh, like this. And then, well, this itself is, might be complicated here in this direction. But here along this direction, you can do the canonical quantization. And so regarding this direction of the time, and you can do the canonical quantization, and there is a fossil Hilbert space for this guy, for this theory. And if you have a manifold like this, you can do the path integral in the bulk, and you have a certain something. Um, and, and then that means that there is a state uh, corresponding to MD, uh, maybe I should write MD minus 1, here in this Hilbert space. And so, um, so it specifies there is a Hilbert space at the boundary, and there is a state uh, coming from the path integral at the bulk. So this is the, um, what I said previously. Um, well, and, and then, as, as I said previously, there are the statement about this identification of T sigma and Tm should be um, about the equivalence of the Hilbert spaces. The Hilbert spaces associated with these two are the same. Um, so there should be a counter statement. Um, but you, you can at least formally translate it as a statement that there is a Hilbert space associated with this one, and this specifies a state in that. But you have to understand it in, in this part, where dimensions are different. And, and of course, well, if you go up dimension one here in this direction, since we are dividing the dimensionality of the same theory, we are uh, losing the dimensions instead of increasing the dimensions. And well, this itself is actually interesting. And to some, some, in some cases, for example, you can try to do the obifold, et cetera, to decrease the dimensions, and that corresponds to increase the dimensions. So, so I sometimes say that um, in this context, the uh, dimensional um, deduction is uh, dimensional oxidation. Um, but anyway, um, there should be some corresponding statement. And of course, there is a Hilbert space. If you have this theory, there is an associated Hilbert space, um, which I might like to see. Well, maybe people can see. Or there is the associated Hilbert space. And of course, I have to choose a particular state out of that. And, and we have this theory is um, dimensionality of this theory is decreased by 1 from this theory. So what you can do is to, um, well, the answer is that that corresponds to certain boundary conditions. Well, there are some theories here. But you can try to uh, place it on the, the half interval. And, and then there are some boundary conditions which you can put on there. And that corresponds to choosing a particular element of the Hilbert space. So this is the boundary condition. And well, and you can try to do the same thing for a more complicated example. In this case, I was implicitly assuming that it has only one boundary. But, but you can try to, say, consider the case with two boundaries. And for example, for concreteness, let's take this to be a two-dimensional manifold and this to be a three-dimensional manifold. And, and then correspondingly, there are some series, T sigma, T sigma, and Tm, sorry, Tm. And here, the information of the uh, of the three manifold connecting these two Riemann surfaces. Um, so it's a cobaltism between the two Riemann surfaces. And in, the in this language of topological quantum field series, et cetera, um, well, this, the, the M, so some, there is some M. Um, this is an element of the endomorphism from the Hilbert space itself. Or if you like, uh, it's an element of the, the dual of this one and another, another, this, another such thing here and there. So it's a map from here to there, where uh, this star represents the orientation reversal. So this specifies an element here in the space. And, and of course, you should be able to translate that to there. 
So as I said, uh, this becomes a boundary condition. So specifying a particular element of here out of here means that you have a boundary condition, corresponding boundary condition. So in this case, we have to choose something out of the product of two boundary conditions with one orientation reversed. And well, that's the, that's the case when we have the domain walls. In other words, when we have domain walls, so there are some series here on this side, and there is another series on this side. And um, in practice, what we mean by choosing the boundary condition is that you can do um, this um, whole folding trick, and you can regard it as a boundary condition of the theory times the, the orientation reversal of the theory. So that's a famous uh, fo folding trick in, say, CFT, for example. We do that all the time. And so, uh, so it is the, what, what we mean by this is to choose a uh, domain wall inside the theory. And well, so this is a general, a lot of general idea, and it should apply to any theory, uh, whatever theory you have. Um, I mean, and in, indeed, it does, to some extent, it doesn't even rely on supersymmetry, except that we already assume this equivalence of the Hilbert space in some ways, and in practice, supersymmetry will be required to ensure that. But the idea itself is very, very general. And well, for example, you might try to do that with the case with the four manifolds, two, three manifolds of the boundary, for example. But there are a lot of things you can do. Well, well, maybe I should try to be a little bit more concrete. And, um, and then, for, for example, what I wrote, oh, no, not here, probably I'll erase. No, here. Here is that if you have um, uh, the Riemann surface, and in that, ca that case is well understood. So this is the review theory. Um, here, which lives here in this theory. And this three-dimensional theory um, should be, well, that's the case when we have S3s. Sorry, S4 is here. This theory is compact for S4. And, and it should be, this three-dimensional theory should be some theory uh, whose boundary theory is review. And, and the answer is known, actually, since the early 90s or even 80s. Um, and then that's the uh, Charles Simon theory with non-compact H group, SR to R uh, Charles Simon theory. Well, basic idea is that review is about complexity deformations. And I was saying uh, 20 minutes ago or so, uh, it's about um, same as the flat connections on the Riemann surface. So it's about flat connections. So, so it's natural that if you consider flat connections in the bulk, and the corresponding theory on the boundary is again the theory of the flat connections. So it should be some SR to R trans Simon theory. And, um, and that's how this correspondence uh, comes in. In other words, the several statements are set, for example, this statement and that statement are intimately connected. And if you like, you can try to go from one to the other uh, in some sense. Um, so so uh, what I'd like to emphasize here in this, the moral of the story is that there are a lot of, depending on various different observables, there are diff different versions which I can come, on, can we come up with. And but that's fine. Um, but the important thing is that there are exact relations, precise relations between the several different proposals. Well, the story is a little bit schematic, so hopefully I'll like, um, I come to a little bit more um, detailed part. So um, this is about, um, and then that's how the mathematical structure comes in. Um, well, the one basic idea is the follows. So I think I already said that, um, so for, for example, well, to make the statement more precise, for example, there is a complex topological here, and there is another complex topological here. And suppose that they are related by an action of the mapping class group, where this is the diffeomorphism mapping class group um, element of this, of this lima surface. And, and then there are tau's and tau primes. Uh, so there should be some domain walls interpreted between different parties of the complex structure module. So that determines the theory. Well, well this is fine, but, well, but you might want to say that, for, for example, this, I defined it somewhat abstractly, but how we do the computation. For example, well, this is a domain wall, but in general, the classification of the domain wall is a very, very uh, non-trivial subject, even when we have supersymmetries. And the complete analysis of boundary conditions, as far as I know, has, has been done for um, for for n equal four and for 
for every gem DLG type series. But, but if you have lower supersymmetries, that's a daunting task in general. So the question is how, how we do the computation, for example. Or, and well, we can try to do the, the various things. First, identify the theory and, and try to do the computation both sides compare. Or in some cases, since this is difficult, we can try to use the correspondent to identify this domain wall theory itself. That could be also interesting. Um, but th this, uh, but anyway. Um, and the way to do the computation is the follows. Um, well, these are three manifolds um, with some boundaries. And well, there is an operation of map starting with a three manifold and then mapping it to another three manifold. Suppose that they have three manifolds uh, with a Riemann surface as a boundary. Well, it has some punctures. Um, so let, let me write it somewhat here. So it has punctures in general. But puncture really means, well, you can try to sequence it so that it has the size of the puncture is finite. And it's called a cusp boundary of the three manifold. And uh, these are called the geodesic boundaries of the three manifold. And indeed, the flat connections have different monodromy. Um, but, but anyway, so this is a structure. And, and well, if you write, for example, this could be second, and then these are represent knots inside inside the three manifold. Well, when it, well, this is just still open manifold, but you can try to close it, and then there are some knots, and then there could some uh, intersect, not intersect. Um, they could entangle in a very complicated ways, and and that determines the knots inside the three manifold. And well, the one thing we could try to do is that first of all, well, to analyze this structure, I said very abstractly that there is a complex circular modular tau. But you have to find a coordinate to analyzing that. And one very good way to do that, um, um, which has been advocated by Hawke and Goncharov um, in particular, well, although the idea itself goes back in the old days. Uh, cr indeed, the name crying was associated with the coordinate, some of the coordinates here. But, but anyway, um, if, so let's start with the, consider the so-called ideal triangulations. Let's delete these knots. Uh, consider, let's consider ideal triangulation of this Riemann surface. Well, I don't draw it completely, but the idea is that uh, the, all the, so this is a triangulation on the Riemann surface, and, and all the vertices at, are at the punctures. So that's, that's the definition. Well, actually, this is, this, this is not too good. Um, we have to, let's, and, and suppose that there are no, I mean, genus in, in, inside this, any of the triangles. So they, all these, triangles are contractible. And um, well, and then um, suppose that they have such a triangulation. And, and then there is operation of attaching a tetrahedron, one tetrahedron. So, so uh, a tetrahedron here. So I'm going to write a three-dimensional tetrahedron, uh, which I'll write as This tetrahedron. So yeah, you should look at it in the 3D language. So it's really a tetrahedron. But but we can try to uh, squash it in this direction. So I sometimes I call this like a pillow case where uh, you have two uh, faces here on this side on the other side. And uh, in the pillow case, there are uh, different diagonals are written on on the faces of the of the pillow case. And it's three dimensional, but very squeezed, almost two dimensional. And now I. Uh, you, you have the operation of at attaching. You can at you start, start with, the with the three manifolds to under And well, I intentionally wrote this figure such that this shape is the shape of this tetrahedron. So you can attach it, and, and the resulting three manifold, the resulting three manifold um, takes the form, um, well, um, well, there was previously the line here, but since we have attached this tetrahedron, uh, the diagonal is, is now mapped to another diagonal here. So we have diagonal here, so, uh, and then there are genus here and there. So it, it's the same Riemann surface uh, to some extent, but it, it just changes the triangulation. So it changes the triangulation, and and what many mathematicians have worked out is that if you have a triangulation, there is a natural coordinate. For each edge, there are some edges, E1, E2, et cetera. And then there are natural coordinates, hook coordinates, um, uh, for each edge. And they parameterize the complex structure module of the Riemann surface. 
And, and if you attach this set to head on, you have a different triangulation, and you have a different um, set of coordinates. Uh, you have a different set of coordinates. And, and then, so instead of saying that you have a tetrahedron, you can say that there is an operator which maps this coordinate to another set of coordinates. And, and this x prime is written as a rational function of this x. And well, mathematicians have formalized this procedure in a combi somewhat combinatorial way. And, and that, that goes by the name of cluster coordinates. And, and so, some of the coordinates, these are called the cluster coordinates. Um, and and th then there is a combinatorial information about the triangulation of Riemann surface, which vertex is connected to which, etc. So there is a quiver, um, and then there are variables associated to the edges. So the vertices of the quiver. But actually, but if you can you can try to do the dual, etc. But anyway, um, but there is a combinatorial information, and if you start with that, you can assign some coordinates on there. And, and they transform nicely under some transformations. And this transformation is known as, a, as you can imagine, cluster transformation. And, and this is expressed by some quantum logarithm function, where the arguments are, some, are again, some, some, of the, these, um, uh, some of these coordinates. And what's nice about this is that uh, you can do the quantization as well. So these are promoted to operators. And um, so, so simply put, the effect of the tetrahedron is just to uh, include some extra operator written in terms of quantum dialogism function. Well, well, this is just adding one tetrahedron. But now you can try to do, um, add more tetrahedrons layer by layer. And, and in general, say, for example, if you have a three manifold, well, three manifolds with certain boundary, and you add some tetrahedrons, say, n tetrahedrons, and it's mapped to some, some, something different, and, well, and then you can try to close it, close the manifold by attaching another closed three manifold, sorry, open three manifold with boundary. If we start with the Riemann surface boundary, by attaching this tetrahedron, tetrahedron uh, the boundary change a little bit. But then afterwards, you can try to glue back this, uh, the same thing. Well, not, it could be a different thing, but, and then this constructs um, a complicated three manifold in general. And, and well, in the operator language, I was proposing, uh, let's say, I was advocating the operator language here, the topological one of theory formulation. And here, they're, they're having just um, three manifold as boundary, as I said, correspond to choosing particular state. And, and then there are some quantum dual logarithms. And uh, there are a lot of quantum dual logarithms appearing here and there. And this, there is the state, again, specified by the three manifold. So this is the general structure. So the whole thing I wrote as M, M, and so this is the partition function of this of this theory. So this is the structure, and and well, you might think that this is a very particular type of three manifold, but there is a, a notion of decomposition of three manifold, uh, which is somewhat sim some similar but different from the Pant decomposition of the Riemann surface, which says that any three manifold could be decompose the censure in this way. So we, um, so we don't really lose too much by specialized to, uh, to, to this case. And in that case, the partition function is written simply as this one. And where this SB is some probably I should write explicitly, so it is, it is a quantum dialogism function. It's just a thousand special function, but has some very nice properties which I can return to uh, in a minute. But anyway, so this, this is a Hilbert space. And probably I should emphasize that Hilbert space, well, this approach is not too useful if the Hilbert space parameterized in these coordinates are very complicated. But, but in practice, these, these coordinates satisfy some com com canonical commutation relations. And the canonical commutation relation says that there is some constant between these two coordinates or promoted to operators. 
It's just a constant uh, determined combinatorially. So by doing some appropriate coordinate change, these are just like a momentum and uh, coordinates of the usual quantum mechanics, we have, although we have many of them. So these are like, a, by doing appropriate choosing a polarization, these are really like a coordinates and momentum up to some transformation, linear combinations involved. So this is a very simple problem. Uh, so you can think of this as um, L2R. So each of these is L2R to some power, where L2R acts, well, this X and T coordinates and momentum acts by product, um, product or differentiation. And these are written in terms of X and Ts. So it's really like a, a standard quantum mechanical problem. And, and, and that's the way to compute the partition function. And an interesting is that exactly the same mathematical structure, really exactly the same mathematical structure, appear in the study of the so-called wall processing phenomena uh, of the four-dimensional n equal two gauge series. So that's somewhat surprising thing. And then um, there, there are some proposals for, for how to explain that. But mathematically, um, to some extent, it's almost trivial because um, the, here in this discussion, we have some two-dimensional Riemann surface and the triangulations, et cetera. But exactly the same mathematical structure appear in this kind of where they, they, they discuss the compactation of the n equal two series on S1. And, and, and then, for example, if you heard the talk about some wall crossing, et cetera, well, you might have heard about the wall crossing formula, et cetera. The wall crossing formula says that uh, some product of quantum dialogism is independent of the, uh, of the change of the parameters. In that case, it's a Kato module, right? And, and then there is a corresponding statement here. And the statement says the following. So I said that any three manifold, any cross three manifold could be represented this way, but the representation is not unique. So they could be rep represented in some uh, different ways with different number of tetrahedrons. In the 2D language, this is essentially the pentagon of the, um, of the, of the two-dimensional Riemann surface. Um, but anyway, so it could be represented in several different ways. And apparently, then, we have a different expressions. But they say uh, the wall crossing formula says, or the so-called identities, miraculous identities satisfy this quantum algorithm, ensures that this is independent of choice of how to decompose uh, the three manifolds into tetrahedral. And that's the, uh, that's the, that's the how to make context of wall crossing phenomena, et cetera. And here, in that case, well, uh, but this is, to some extent, a generalization of the wall crossing phenomena discussion. Because, for example, I said that the complex module here and there are connected by uh, the SL2Z transformation. So that's a monodromy on, on the modular space of the complex structures, or some yeah, mo modular space of the Riemann surface. So the modular space of the Riemann surface, you start with a particular point, go around, and go around is represented by the action of the mapping class group, go around and come back to the original point. But of course, they could some non-trivial no monodromies. And if there's non-trivial monodromy, there is non-trivial answer. And the wall crossing phenomena is the case that when the monodromy is trivial, the X expression is trivial. Well, so it's really the generalization of this wall crossing phenomena uh, to the case where the loop in question is non contractible in the modular space. And, well, well, of course, this is still a complicated expression. I haven't even told you what quantum diagram is. Uh, it's written in terms of infinite products, et cetera. It's still complicated. And, um, well, you can try to do the, take the classic argument. Uh, classical limit, and if you, but it's, it's a very standard procedure of taking the classical limiting uh, quantum mechanics where you insert some complete states. For example, you construct some complete states X and Ps, and they, they satisfy completeness relations, uh, dx equals to one, for example, and you insert such states in, in, inside these states. And then these, uh, these, these operators become the number, uh, we now become the numbers because we have inserted the complete states so it becomes sort of an integral, and you can take the limit, etc. And in this limit, the operators becomes numbers, and then some integral. And we have the form like exponential. And the leading term is d squared. And there is some something coming out uh, plus the subleading corrections. And interestingly, uh, the connection, but the correspondence between this part and that part is, is a little bit subtle in the sense that this is written in terms of product of quantum diagrams, but this is not really simply the sum of quantum classical diagrams because you have to take care of the ordering of the operators, etc. And interestingly, if, if, roughly speaking, if you have quantum diagrams here, we have classical diagrams uh, plus 
across the quadratic part. And, and this combination is known as the Lozier dialogism function, another dialogism function. And what's nice about it is that it appears in the formula for the volume of this tetrahedron. So this, this tetrahedron in three dimensions, and there is a notion of volume associated with that. And so interestingly, the volume of the tetrahedron comes out in this process. And, and also, you can try to relate the quantum dialogism identities here and the classical dialogism identities there. And there are some beautiful works by uh, Kashaev and Nakanishi, uh, where they, well, from a from support mathematical standpoint, they do, the, they do this. But, but we can do this more, uh, more also from the physics two point of view. And, and then we have the reduced partition function like this one. And, and if you have an expression like this, well, sorry, uh, I have written sigma, so uh, there is an expression like this. And if you have such an expression, um, what it should do is to extremize, do the solid point approximation, at least that's the one thing. And the solid point equation is, of course, the same as this one is to zero. Um, and then solve it. And, and then, so this is the case when it's, it's, it's some extreme high value. And then plug that back into the solution. And, and then what they can do is that, uh, and then um, compare this with the certain volumes. And in this, in this case, for example, but well, well in general, for example, the answer do depend on what kind of boundary conditions you, you choose. But in order to get rid of that, for example, we can try to uh, consider, uh, instead of closing that by a three manifold, we consider uh, the S1, where uh, we have a lima satisfied world of S1. That's now the mapping torus. And then, it's really, instead of having this, we have a complete set here. And in that case, uh, we have the volume uh, of the three manifold. So this is a classical uh, volume of the three manifold. But you might be perplexed that I'm talking about the volume as a number. For, for, for example, typically, if you have, say, say two-dimensional sphere, the volume is just is continuously depends on the radius. And there is no, and, and it's, it has moduli. But what's so special about this uh, hyperbolic manifold is that there are no such degrees. But you, you can try to uh, deform it. But, but at least under certain so-called completing condition, there is no way to uh, deform the hyperbolic structure. And then this, this is determined as a particular number. And that statement, that hyperbolic structure is rigid, known as the most of rigidity, uh, corresponds to the statement that the solid point is isolated here in this equation. So we have the volume. So uh, what I explained is that basically the leading contribution to this is like a volume. And, and I forgot to say that there is also uh, a complex part, known as the channel sign of the variant of three manifold, which is roughly the just the integral of the channel sign of three form over the three manifold. I said roughly because there are boundaries and we have to worry about that. But um, but the leading contribution scales like this. And you can verify that explicitly, very explicitly, using these computations and, and compare the relative description with some volume in channel sign of the variant. And you can check this equality. And this statement is interesting in the sense, um, in, in, the, in the sense that I was talking about the equivalence of, uh, I think I raised it just that, uh, the, the partition function of three manifolds and, uh, and the partition function of the three dimensional gauge series. And I was explaining this in terms of TM, but this is also almost by construction. Um, this is the same as the uh, T, T uh, of the theory. It should be the same as the uh, theory, a uh, partition function of, of the three dimensional gauge series. And, and this statement is just a statement that the classical limit of the Charles Simons uh, of the three dimensional partition function gives the classical action. And indeed, the classical action of the Charles Simon theory is just given by this combination. And well, now you have to go back to this TM, plus this TM, et cetera. Um, so to see that, you have to go back to this story, where whenever you have some tetrahedron, uh, there is uh, one function quantum derivative. So uh, essentially, this contributes to this function uh, to the partition function S3. So all you have to do is to search for um, some theory which contributes this uh, partition of, of this product um, uh, to the partition function. And the answer is no. And it, 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 indeed, uh, the partition function of S3 with some deformation has been worked out by Sunjay uh, sitting there and uh, his collaborators, Amain Hosomichi. And, and, then, and you can see that 
uh, hypermultiplet contributes exactly this factor. So this is written as an integral, sorry, as an infinite product. An infinite product essentially comes from the fact that we are expanding around the house. Uh, it's respect to spherical harmonics um, in S3. So, so this means that this, this should correspond to hyper, one hyper. And, and you can try to do um, the identification. But uh, what's interesting about this tetrahedral is that any three manifold could be decomposed. But for example, I'm mainly talking about hyperbolic three manifolds, but uh, any three manifold could be decomposed into, in, into the tetrahedron. Uh, and of course, that's a, there is a counterpart in two dimensions where if you have any Riemann surface, could be decomposed into the triangles. And that's the higher dimension analog of that. So, if, so roughly speaking, if you could identify the theory corresponding to that, and also the idea of how to glue these theories together, uh, that determines the, the theory TM for any M. And so that's the way people have identified um, the 3D theory. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time, so let me stop here. Any questions? So if you have a collection of quantum dialogues, can you read out uniquely a 3D gauge theory? Um, well, uh, I think so, but, but if you ask me in practice, for example. Yeah, I asked him. Probably. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, I, ha I haven't worked out that in, in great detail, but um, <coughs> So I think it's still open, I think. But also, yeah, I mean, there is, uh, it's to some extent an algorithm, but in practice, for example, a gluing procedure could be a little bit complicated. There are some one for operators appearing in the simple potential, et cetera. So, yeah, so, and, and, and another approach it might be to just really honestly analyze the boundary condition of the 4D, just take T sigma for n equal to 4D n equal to and analyze the boundary conditions. But there are some some difficulties, like uh, there are corrections to the KR potentials, et cetera. So, and even if you analyze the classical boundary conditions, it's hard to say. Um, Sorry, can you at least go this way? I mean, after from a triangulated surface where you know what is the gauge theory, like on the boundary, mm -hmm. and then do your machine and yes. identify uniquely the three manifold? Yeah, unique module mirrors, mirrors, and it's set right. Yeah, yeah. I, think, yeah I think that's what that, that should be done. Um, to some extent, I, I tried, but I haven't completed the story. Yeah. Um, well, at least this is a con rather concrete way. I mean, this, this triangulation, the central yeah, area, so everything is concrete. So, and then I started going through this exercise. But there's still work to do uh, about that, choosing the boundary conditions in and out, for example. But I have some some thoughts about that too. Uh, there are indeed some mathematical um, work about that, and uh, so there, there's well, and also physics work. Um, but anyway. Um, I think after going through these steps, uh, we have a complete understanding of TM, very explicitly at least. That, that's what I hope for. But, but I haven't finished that project yet. No, but sorry, because I, I didn't understand this, the status of the art. So if I give you two, uh, the same Riemann surface with two different triangulations, completely generic, mm -hmm. you can tell me the three manifold, just knowing the boundaries of mm -hmm. this sort of mapping to right? Yeah, so what this is, I, I, for, for example, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, um, and, and for example, there are some there are some ambiguities. For example, the one degree is the choice of the uh, triangulation of the Riemann surface. But if you think that it's like a point conjugating some operator with some certain element, so up to the change of the boundary condition, it doesn't change anything, for example. And the change of the triangulations, uh, they're, they're the same as quantum dialog identities. And, um, Yeah, so I, yeah, I think it determines the, the partition function uniquely. And, and of course, there is a question of whether partition function, for, for example, at, in order for this to work, I was implicitly assuming that partition function is far enough to determine the theory itself. But it's not clear whether that's true, for example. Um, but in practice, if, if you have a quantum diary, you can try to identify some other, etc. But, but as a conceptual question, it's not clear whether, well, there could be two different 3D series which wrote a different fixed point but have the same Lagrangian, for example. Uh, sorry, no, I have the three S3 partition function. Um, so, in order for this story to really work, I have to exclude that possibility, which I think is extra work to do. And there are some possibilities. I mean, for example, S3 partition function doesn't worry care about the simple potential um, in, inside the theory. Um, so, it's not clear why that S3 partition phi far is far, far enough. And, but, but, for example, if you do say S3, sorry, the super common index in 3D, and if they match, et cetera, and that's very strong indication, as you know. I mean, it's an infinite number of, number of coefficients coming out if they match. I think that's a very strong indication. But even in that case, it's, 
it could be that some, some series which happen to have the same index, but uh, throw a different fixed point, for example. So modular, there, there is assumption what, yeah, there is at that point. Uh, uh, also, <coughs> I have some technical questions. So you, you, can you construct this whole control coordinate for SL? Oh, well, NR? yeah, that, that's a very good question. And indeed, I have been thinking, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I have been thinking about, with, about that with uh, Dan C and uh, Tudor Timofti at IS. And we have some preliminary results. But, um, but anyway, I think the short answer is yes. And there, is a, there are coordinates by Fokker and Goncharov. Um, where, and yeah, so not really speaking, well, well, not really speaking, the idea is that, um, um, but in, in the case of SL2, uh, the four contra coordinates is time determined from the cross ratio of the uh, various position, same position. Um, but, but if you go to SL and R, there are cross ratios, and of course, mount, the number of cross ratios increase, but they are something more the triple ratio, and that, that serves as extra parameter. And, um, and, and it is serves as the com complete parameter. Although, con co combinatorially, the cons construction is very similar. Instead of having the triangle, you, you just divide into smaller triangles and you have some coordinates for each of the dots. And again, the, uh, uh, the adjacent situation where they are connected, etc., determine the Poisson structure for that. So, so yeah, I think the story goes similarly, and, uh, and we are working on the gauge theory identifications, etc. And indeed, that structure is very, I mean, so essentially, for that purpose, all, all necessary is a uh, algebraic structure, the creepers, cluster coordinates, etc. And this structure is very, very general. I mean, that, for example, there are some uh, Lima models, um, and in folk, sorry, Kenyon and Gontier recently uh, constructed some Poisson structure on the space related to the Lima models, and they have again have cluster coordinates, etc., which are connected to these coordinates by some operation. So, and, and Lima models are more, to some extent, more, much more general than, um, than the, the quivers coming from this triangulation Lima surface. So there should be a sort of generalization of that too. Uh, to a broader cross of series. I, I don't know how, how to interpret that in terms of pipelines, etc. But and, and then some interesting structure associated with the cluster algebra, etc. Pops up in completely different contexts. Um, for example, I, I heard that Nima and his collaborators are now working on scattering amplitude stuff, etc. And they again have some demo structures. But part of that is already published in the papers. But uh, they were studying the leading so called leading singularities of the scattering amplitudes, and they have some rock wide vertices uh, specifying. Um, um, the, the helicities, and they have a graph, like something like a nightmare, and they have some, again some coordinates associated with the grass manion. So it seems that a lot of interesting structures appear. Um, the, the same structure, exactly the same mathematical structure seems to appear in various different contexts in physics. So I hope to find a more unified viewpoint about why this happens uh, fr from physics viewpoint.